The red convertible delves into themes of coming of age and the trauma of war through the experiences of two young Chippewa men. Lyman Lamartine, the protagonist and narrator, reflects on the relationship he shares with his brother, Henry Jr., tracing their journey before, during, and after Henry's service in the Vietnam War. A central focus is their ownership of a red Oldsmobile convertible, a symbol that holds deep significance for both of them. The story's structure features chapter titles marked with years and epigraphs attributing the speaker, which are omitted when the story is presented independently. The narrative opens with Lyman's assertion that he was the first to drive a convertible on the reservation. He clarifies that he and his brother co-owned the car initially, but it's now solely Henry's. Lyman briefly recounts his ability to make money, stemming from his work at the Joliet Cafe since the age of 15. Despite becoming a partial manager by age 16, the cafe's destruction by a tornado ends his success there. It's after this event that they first see the red convertible. The car captivates them, prompting them to pool their resources, Lyman's savings, and Henry's earnings, allowing them to purchase it impulsively. They embark on a transformative summer road trip from their Chippewa reservation in North Dakota through South Dakota and Montana. Along the way, they encounter Susie, a hitchhiker from Chicken, Alaska, with her hair styled in buns. They offer her a ride home, leading them to an idyllic stay in Alaska, where they camp in Susie's yard. The brothers form a deep connection to this peaceful existence, but the approaching end of summer marks their return journey. As they part ways with Susie, she bids them farewell by letting her hair down, revealing its remarkable length, a poignant gesture that symbolizes the passage of time and change. Lyman fondly reminisces about Henry playfully holding Susie on his shoulders, their shared laughter as they twirl around with Susie's hair mimicking his own. Soon after their return from the eventful road trip, Henry heads off to boot camp, becoming a Marine, no surprise given his robust physique. As his deployment to Vietnam commences, Henry attempts to cede full ownership of the car to Lyman, although the latter still regards it as his car during Henry's absence, even as it rests on cinder blocks. Three years later, Henry returns home, transformed by the experiences of war. His demeanor oscillates between silence and anger, his presence largely occupied by the television. There's an incident where his absorption in the screen leads him to bite through his lip. Lyman and their mother contemplate consulting a doctor, although they're hesitant due to the lack of a Chippewa doctor on the reservation and the fear of Henry's potential hospitalization. In a desperate endeavor to revive the Henry they once knew, Lyman intentionally damages the Oldsmobile using a crowbar. Strangely, this tactic appears effective initially, as Henry's behavior shifts positively, focusing on repairing the car. With the arrival of spring, Henry proposes a drive with the car, urging Lyman to join. Before setting out, Bonita, Lyman's younger sister, captures a photo of them. Lyman displays the photo briefly but stows it away when he notices the darkness in Henry's expression. After Bonita snaps the photo, the brothers visit the Red River to observe its high water levels. The beauty of the drive lifts their spirits, yet the sight of the almost flooded river prompts Henry's withdrawal and Lyman's apprehension. In a moment of tension, Lyman confronts Henry, and in their exchange, Henry admits that he knows Lyman deliberately wrecked the car. Henry's confession extends to the reason behind fixing it, he aimed to ensure Lyman's possession. However, Lyman rejects the gesture, leading the argument to escalate into a physical altercation. Yet, in the midst of their battered state, their eyes lock, and laughter erupts between them. Sharing the beers they brought, they toss the cans playfully into the river. As time passes, Lyman proposes they return to seek the company of some girls. Henry's disposition darkens once more as he disparages the girls as crazy. Teasingly, Lyman retorts that Henry is crazy too. Unexpectedly, Henry springs to his feet, jubilantly dancing and whooping, prompting contagious laughter from Lyman, even if it causes him physical discomfort. Henry's enthusiasm drives him to leap into the river to cool off, but as the water's current gains strength, it carries him away from the bank. With remarkable calmness, he notifies Lyman that his boots are filling with water, and then he vanishes downstream. Frantically, Lyman searches the river's expanse until the setting sun signals the end of his quest. As he emerges from the water, he starts the convertible's engine, shifts it into first gear, and watches it roll into the river. Its headlights illuminate the surroundings until they flicker and fade, leaving only the sound of the rushing water. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.